Okay, I'm going to show you how you might want to try to solve a problem in this course. Um, as you can see, I assigned some homework here, and I'll just go ahead and work out the first problem on how I expect expect at least uh, you to arrange your problems on Excel and how you might want to go about solving a problem. So the first thing it asks for is to we'll go, go ahead and go to problem two. So I already included the first 80 pages of the textbook here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to here. And problem two is down on page 45, I believe. Somewhere on around page 46. And since I'm going to use this problem here, sometimes it's easier just to paste the problem into the Excel spreadsheet so you can refer to it instead of going back and forth. So that's what I usually do. I'll, I'll paste it in there just to have it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to... Uh, a uh, snipping tool. There's a new one now too, but I like to use a snipping tool. You can use a new one. And I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to pull up uh, Excel. Let me go to here and I'm going to get Excel. And I'll go ahead and just paste that problem in here. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. So here's problem two. Now, when you submit these problems to me, you want to label them down below. So I'm going to label this. I'm going to double click down here. I'm going to go problem two dash two. So cha problem two, chapter two, problem two. And if you can, you kind of want to put it in a given find and solution format. Sometimes that's not, not always easy to do. But if you can, it's good to go here. What are we given? So what is this problem giving us for information? And um, the, uh, chapter two is a time value of money. Is a time value of money type of uh, uh, time value of money type of problem. So usually when it's time value of money, I'll go N R present value, the payment, and the future value. Okay, and in this case, N is how many years? It's five years ago. R is we don't know R. The problem's asking for R. It doesn't it doesn't state R in the question up here explicitly. The present value is $50. So it says five years ago, you made a deposit of $50. So Excel is going to think about that. Like this is going to say out of your pocket came $50 if you're going to use an Excel function. So I'm going to, so I'm going to say a, a negative $1.50. Now I put the dollars on there because it automatically formats it at dollars for me. So since it's coming out of my pocket, since the cash flow is negative, out of my pocket is negative. There's no payments in this problem. But in the future, after five years, I'm going to have, I'm going to go ahead and put the dollar sign again to make sure it formats it as dollars. Now, your textbook a lot of times doesn't use the dollar format, so I'm not going to be really picky about it. I just like to do that. So this is basically what we're given. We're given five years. We want to know R. Our present value, well, I invested $50. I didn't make any payments. And then in five years in the future, this is the present value. This is the payment. This is the number of periods. The future value is $70 and 13 cents. I've typed 14. Sorry about that. Okay. Now we could do a cash flow diagram. Uh, let me just do one real quick. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to uh, draw border. And we can say, well, I, I spent, let me, let me make the border. I'm going to do a thicker border here so you can see it. So I spent uh, $50 and then one, two, three, four, five periods I got some kind of money back okay and then I'm gonna hit escape and this equals well I could just take I'm gonna say equals a negative this because um, in a timeline this is already pointing down so a negative negative is a positive right so I put, I put it equals a negative and then click on that and it's gonna make that positive and here it equals this okay and this is time this is period uh, zero period one, two, three, four, and five. So this is the period, then R is what we don't know. So we could say R is question mark, okay? So basically this problem wants to know what interest rate, if I invest $50 right now, what interest rate is gonna make it be $70.14 when I take it out in the future? Okay, so we wanna find, and I'm gonna restate we wanna find, uh, we want to find A, 
We want to use the textbook template to solve this. And B, we want to use the algebra equation to solve this for, I'll say for R, for the interest rate. Okay, so for a solution, well, I'm going to go get the textbook. We're going to solve A here, right? So I'm going to go and get the textbook template. And a textbook template, if we go, if we go back to our class, uh, where am I at here? Coursework. We have the textbook templates right here, so I'm going to click on that, open it up. Double click on it. And I have to enable editing. And I have to enable macros. And I go down here on the bottom and scroll to the left. I can see exercise two template. They spelled it wrong, but that's fine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab grab these things. I'm gonna go copy. Then I'm gonna go ahead and close it because I don't need it right now. You might want to leave it open if you're gonna use it for another problem. And then I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go ahead and paste that template in here. Oh, maybe I lost it there. Let me go get it again. Uh, sorry. I don't know what I did. Let's try it again. Exercise templates. Open it up. Double click. And I want to enable editing. Enable content. This has macros in it. That's why you have to enable content. And I'm going to scroll. And I'm going to scroll uh, to the left. Get the template two. Copy. And I'm going I'm to leave it open. Maybe that's what my problem was. And I'm going to paste it right here. Control V. Now. <clears throat> So the template says start with, they're starting with 5%, and then it has formulas in here. Now, when you see this little thing, Excel's got, the textbook has got some little macros in there that do this little formula. Um, there's also a, a formula in, uh, built into Excel in the newer versions. It's called formula text. So I could also replace that with equals formula text. Formula text. So I want the formula text of this right here. I hit enter, and that does the same thing. It looks a little bit different, but it does the same thing. So I'm going to copy that down. All right. And um, the problem is this first formula is pointing to B2, which is up here. And where, where you want it to point to this R here. Since I copied it over here, I messed it up a little bit. Now I could use it. I could go over here, and I could use it... Uh, I could use it here. Maybe that would be better. Let's use it here. So I could say, uh, no, I could use it here, but I'm not, no, that's not. I'm going to go ahead and use it here. The only thing is, since I copied it over here, since this is an absolute reference, since it has dollar signs, it's pointing up here to cell B2. And what it's trying to point at, it wants to point at this 5% now, because we copied it over and moved it to a different place. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to click 5, I'm going to click here B21. So now I, I want to I want to point to this R. I don't want to point to the R that was on the original template, which was here on B2. Now I want to be pointing to this R, which is on B21. So I had to change that. Now also there are dollar signs in front. That makes it absolute. So in order to make that absolute, I'm going to hit F4. And F4, instead of having to type the dollar signs manually, it automatically puts them there. If I hit F4, it puts it on, under one. Hit it again, it puts the other. Hit it again, it goes away, and hit it again, it comes back. So it toggles through the different ones. But I want to have dollar signs, either type them or to hit F4. So I want that first equation to hit B21. Now I'm going to go here, I'm going to copy these down. So one way I could copy it is I could go to this drag box and just drag it down, and it copies it down. Another way, I could just double click it on the bottom right hand corner. You go into this little cross here, double click it, and it copies it down. Now you can see that they, since I had dollar signs, every one of these is pointing to this 5%. And 
if I didn't know it, this one would be pointing to B22, this would be pointing to B23, this would be 24 and B25. So this dollar sign makes it an absolute reference, so it's always pointing at this 5%. Now, the problem says, it says it, says it right here, this is the initial positive of $50. Now, remember, I use negative up here, but here, since I'm doing it this way, I'm going to use positive. So initial $50, and then and then the next year, I have $2.50, because 5% of $50 is $2.50, plus the original $50. And the next year, I did the interest on interest. I'm getting $52.50, so the interest on that is going to be $2.63, so now I'm going to have $55.13, and so on, and finally until we get to last year. So what we want to do, we want to guess this number until we get $70.00. Oh, I thought I had this as 13 and 13 cents. Sorry, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So uh, so I could check 6% here. And it's closer, right? But it's not enough. Now, one thing I don't like, I don't ever like to have percent rounded off. Excel rounds percent. And I always like to take percent out two places. So we'll go 6.00%. All right. Let's try 8%. 8% is too much because I want $70.13, right? So let's try 7%. And they made it really easy for us, right? We don't have to go 7 point something percent. And that happens to be the answer. So the answer is 7, 7%. 7 So that was just that easy. I just had to copy this over, make sure that this was pointing to B21 instead of B2, and then copy that formula down and make sure there's a dollar sign. Now, another thing I could do... In the textbook in Chapter 2 brushes on this, so I'm going to show it to you. Let's change this back to, say, 2%. I could use Goal Seek. Excel will do the guessing for us. This is a very powerful function. And I could go in here. I can go to Data. Under the See, I have different ta tabs. And I hit Data. Then this contextual menu comes up. I want to go into the, into the Forecast area. And I want to do What If Analysis. And then I'll go to Goal Seek. And for Goal Seek, I want to set this cell, I want to set this cell, I'm sorry, to a value of, now I can't click on the cell, I have to type it in. So I want to set it to a value of 70.13. I wish you could click on the cell. And I want to change this interest rate. So basically I want to set this cell, this 5796 is in there right now. I want to change it to 70.13 by changing this interest rate. Excel doesn't care anything about it, whatever is in between. It's just going to change this. Basically, what we just did is going to change this until we get 73 point, or 70.13. And then if I hit OK, and Excel just did it automatically for you, which is kind of cool. So if you ever use Goal Seek, you should say in here, use Goal Seek. That way, your teacher knows, how did they get that answer? Okay, well, you, you could say either you guessed or you used Goal Seek. In this case, you use Goal Seek. And that's perfectly fine to use Goal Seek in a problem. So Goal Seek is very powerful because this could be a very, very complicated problem. And all you have to do is just Excel, 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 say you're checking prices and profit or something. And you said, well, what if I what if I sell it for this amount? What's my profit? And it could be a very complicated spreadsheet, you know, thousands and thousands of cells, and it'll actually calculate it for you. All right, so let's do part B. B. It asks, uh, let's just copy this. I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to go equals. So let's solve part B. It says use the algebra equation. It has the algebra equation up here. 70.13 equals 50 times 1 plus r to the fifth power. So I'm just going to solve this real quickly. You can do the algebra in, on paper by yourself, but I'm going to solve it all. So if this is an algebra equation, and you want to get r by itself. We're solving it for r, so you want to get r by itself. So, the, so we're going to get r by itself over here on the right-hand side. The first thing we have to do is we have to divide by 50 on both sides. So I'm going to say this is equal to, whenever you do a formula in Excel, you're going to go equals. And it starts out with the 70.13 divided by 50. Now I put a negative 50 up here. So in order to make that a positive 50, I'm just saying a negative, negative. Okay? So I'm going to put that in parentheses. You can never use too many parentheses in Excel, right? Now make sure that that does that first before it does anything else. So now I got the grid of the 50. So now I have 1 plus r to the fifth power. So how do I get rid of the fifth power? You take both sides to the 1 fifth power. 
So I'm going to say caret parentheses 1 divided by, well, a rule in Excel, if you already have it already, you shouldn't do it again. We have it right here, 5, 5 years. So that's to the 1 fifth power. And now, now we have the, the 5 over here. The last thing we have is 1 plus r. How do we get rid of the 1? We have to subtract 1 on both sides. So then I'm going to go minus 1 and then enter. Okay, now that's 0 0.07. Now why is it 0 0.07? Well, that's the decimal version of 7%, right? So I could go ahead and go up here. I could click Format Painter, and let's format that as percent. We could make both of these yellow, right, because that's the answer. Okay, so that's very simple. Let me put the formula in here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go Control-C to copy this, and I'm going to go Control-V to paste it down here. Remember, this is formula text I use. So that just shows you the formula. So that's how you would solve that. Remember, uh, if you can use a given find solution format, uh, always label each problem. Don't put more than one problem. If you want to do another problem, you just hit this to do plus. Next would be problem 2-4. Okay. Another thing you could do, uh, I was going to show you an alternate solution, uh, probably the way I would do it. Use uh, alternate. This doesn't ask you to do it in the textbook, but let's go ahead also to you using the Excel uh, rate function. So you say R, and I say equals rate. Then the first thing it asks is the number of periods. The number of periods is five. I get comma, and that's bold. It asks for the next thing. The next thing is the payments. Is zero? I hit comma. The next thing it asks is for the present value is a negative fifty. Now Excel thinks like this. Like this, it thinks negative. You're investing negative. You're getting. If you put positive here, it won't work, right? It has to be negative on one and positive on another. So I'll leave it as a negative fifty. The future value is 70.13. And then it asks for the type and the gas. Don't worry about that in this point. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And again, I want to always take my rates out to two points. And that's how you would solve that. I'm going to go control C to copy this, control V. So that's how you would do it on using the Excel rate function. Okay, so there's several ways to solve this. I could even show you more ways, but Let's not get it too confusing. It's gonna the book really gets into a lot of different ways to solve these type of problems. But we'll just do that for now. So hopefully that helped. Now remember, if you're a student of mine, you can request me to make a video like this. Say, like, sure, I didn't understand how to do problem 2-16. Uh, could you produce a video for me? And I'll produce a YouTube video. Uh, for those of you guys that didn't uh, aren't taking this as a class from me. Uh, the book where you, a book I took this problem out of was this book right here, Principles of Finance with Excel by Simon Beninga. Okay. And, uh, I'll try to give you, those of you that aren't taking this class from here and just watching this on YouTube, I'll also try to give you some links to, to some of the files I used here. All right. Uh, hopefully that helps. If you like this video, uh, click like. I'm going to have my picture up here. Click on that to subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment if you, if you have a question or you think I could have done something better. Uh, hopefully that helped. See you next time. Bye.